here on um, want to talk about evolution. And it's about fucking time we had a fucking revolution. Make the white man pay! Viva la revolucion! My view on evolution. Oh, you said evolution? <sighs> fucking disappointment. Is that, uh, well, let me just give a background. I mean, I was taught evolution as a fact. Yes, you were taught correctly. Evolution is a fact. Unfortunately, according to your video here and the comments that you've left, you have absolutely no idea what evolution actually is, let alone what evolutionary theory states. You know, we're all, we all saw the diagrams of, uh, you know, lower life forms going up to, you know, larger life forms. There is no such thing as lower life forms. The concept just doesn't make any sense in biology. Uh, you know, tadpole to man. Tadpole to man. Listen carefully. The pellet with the poisons in the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. Oh, the pellet with the poisons in the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. Good man. Just remember that. No, dear. It's tadpole to frog, not tadpole to man. Kind of thing. Uh, in the science books, of course, it all seems so natural. Like sodomy. And, uh, of course, nowadays, you know... Christians are discredited in many ways. Why well, mention Christians when the topic is evolution? And if Christians are discredited, who do you suppose is to blame for that? You know, they look, make themselves look even more ridiculous by some of their uh, arguments against evolution. Christians don't make arguments against evolution. It's creationists making arguments against what they claim is evolution. Two. Totally different things entirely. However, because some of the arguments do come from people who are ridiculous, does not mean that uh, the arguments are without any weight. That's right. Scientists should listen to ridiculous people. One particular argument I have a, a problem with is... Are you saying that you're ridiculous so we should listen to your arguments? This is what I'm hearing. Uh, if I'm wrong... Please set me straight. Uh, or one particular argument I want to uh, uh, talk about is how uh, natural selection explains, um, uh, you know, of the wing and complex, uh, irreducibly complex uh, traits. Natural selection is the explanation. It is not something that needs explaining. As for the wing being irreducibly complex, WRONG! <sighs> uh, let's take a wing, for example. What wing? Uh, flight has been invented in evolution many times. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of wings. What type of wing are you referring to? You have a wing. Um, how, how that developed according to natural selection. Yes, that is the answer. It's gradual, okay? So, um, everything is gradual in natural selection. No, natural selection is not gradual. It is oftentimes extremely abrupt. Evolutionary theory. So no animal uh, was born with a wing just popping out. They had to have some sort of nub or an extended finger. An extended finger! <laughs> he said extended finger! <laughs> or, you know, all these incremental thousands and thousands of incremental changes in, be in, in, in between, you know, every generation had to have incremental changes in order to come up with this. Every generation? No. But here's the problem. So instead of writing a paper and submitting it to a refereed, peer-reviewed science journal to correct the problem, what do you do? You make a YouTube video. Natural selection is based on uh, random mutations that happen. 
physical mutation. Physical mutations instead of the imaginary ones. Uh, mostly physical that we can see is what I'm talking about as far as a wing. You mean a phenotype. And these physical mutations, uh, mostly nature just cancels them out or kills the creature. Yes, they mostly come out at night. Mostly. Or does not allow it to be born. It has such a mutation, doesn't survive. Yes, if the mutation is expressed phenotypically, of course, the vast majority are not. A fish that, you know, was born with, you know, without fins is going to die. It depends on the environment. Of course, there are fish that are born without eyeballs, and if they live in a cave, they don't need them. This is what natural selection is all about. It is an organism being selected for a particular environment by the environment. One cannot just say that for all fish, losing a fin is going to be fatal. Uh, just like losing eyes aren't always fatal. It depends on the environment. That is what natural selection is all about. The environment. Uh, and it will not reproduce. So most physical, most mutations are, are bad things. Wait a minute, you're talking phenotypically expressed mutations. Totally different than most mutations. Most mutations are neutral. They occur in a genome where the DNA does absolutely nothing. And, uh, that therefore, you know, nature deals with it in its own harsh way. But this is the basis of natural selection. So when you have a, let's say we have a proto-bird type creature, you mean a therapid dinosaur. And uh, all of a sudden it, ha it starts to have like, I don't know, it, it has fingers, but then there's webbing in between the fingers. Okay, So that's the beginning of a wing or something. A wing or something. Okay, so it has webbing. It's born with webbing. All its brothers and sisters and then the rest of the, the flock or whatever, they don't have any webbing. They just have claws. You mean like some dogs have webbing between their fingers and other dogs don't, right? Well, if, if this animal, uh, the parents and everyone else, if they get their food by grabbing things, and it has webbed fingers, it could have a hard time and it might not be able to survive. It depends entirely on the environment. Therefore, it depends on natural selection. But even if it does survive its life, the chances of it reproducing another individual with uh, webbed fingers or such a, a gross, uh, you know, physical mutative trait is, is absurdly small. The chances of that happening are very small because mutations are extremely rare for a good reason. You know, Mendelian genetics is over 150 years old. It kind of predates uh, Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, they were actually contemporary. Mendelian genetics explains how mutated alleles get passed on from generation to generation. Should have been in your junior high school science book. Uh, there's a hell of a lot of articles available on the internet if you just want to look it up. It's not very, very unlikely, it is extremely likely that such a mutation would be passed on. Especially if it is a beneficial mutation for the environment that it finds itself in. Because nature does not, you know, they're, they're harmful for the animal. Or beneficial to the animal or the plant, depending on the environment, which is, of course, natural selection. Uh, but yet, that would have to happen according to natural selection. Yes, and it's observed to happen. This is, this is why people don't even figure this out in their minds. As compared to figuring these things out in their spleen. This, this uh, proto-bird would have to have these web fingers, they have to have you know, offspring, and, and of course we're talking like thousands or millions of years or whatever, and you're going to have to have, you know, you have all, it's not just one proto-bird, you're going to have another proto-bird on the other side of the village. Other side of the village. <laughs> yeah, the same way, web fingers. But here's another thing, too. It's not only rare, but it has to be considered a survival advantage. No, a mutation that is expressed phenotypically does not need to lead to a survival advantage. It could just be 
completely neutral. Uh, such as your earlobes. Do you need those for anything? No! Are they in any way adding to your reproductive success? Uh, you, buddy, I very much doubt it. Um, you might be like Renee O'Connor, where she has cute earlobes. Um, definitely that would get more reproductive success for her. But for most people, and certainly not for you, and not for me, damn right! Just neutral! Mutation does not need to lead to reproductive success. Over regular fingers. So you're saying when a person is born with six fingers on one hand, they automatically die. And, um, you know, for it to survive and the other species to die out. Other species? What the fuck does speciation have to do with this? We're talking phenotypically expressed mutations. Uh, even if you're talking speciation, the parent species doesn't have to just die out once a daughter species, daughter population speciates. They can both go their separate ways. Um, that is usually what happens. Just automatically die out? That's just idiotic. So, I mean, when you, when you actually look at the scenario of how that would happen, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, and yet it is an observed fact. You know why it doesn't make any sense to you? I'm going to be polite and not say. I mean, it, it just, it's not tenable. And yet it's observed happening. How an, how an individual creature can develop this horrible mutation, yet have it be a survival advantage, and have it be frequent enough to where you know, it creates a whole new species. It just Cumulative mutation does not always create new species. It doesn't lead to speciation events. Take humans, for example. Like I said, every child has at least 100 and average 200 mutations that the parents didn't have. Over the generations, these mutations pile up. Yet, thousands and thousands of Generations and humans are still interfertile. That is, we are still the same species. This doesn't make much sense. And yet that is what natural selection is and evolutionary theory. Evolutionary theory makes perfect sense to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of scientists out there. But it doesn't make sense to you. The question is, who do you think is the idiot? I'm just asking. Wait a minute, most mutations, uh, uh, as compared to figuring these out in, as compared to physics, you know, this makes perfect sense, 11, 11, the fuck, uh, 